Welcome back to the Virtual Light Broadcast at lightworker.com. Today's date is March 27, 2010. This is segment three. And let us all welcome back Sandy. Welcome back to the Virtual Light Broadcast. We live in very interesting times, and we all know that the Earth has been doing some very interesting things lately. I've often wondered if the Earth could speak what would she tell us? Well, today we're going to find out because our next guest is Pepper Lewis. Pepper is a gifted intuitive, um, a channel. She channels Gaia, Mother Earth, who speaks to her through emotions. Pepper Lewis, welcome to the Virtual Light Broadcast. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you very much. Tell us about your connection with Gaia. Well, it's a very strong connection. It always has been. It started in 1994 after the Northridge earthquake in Los Angeles where I lived at the time. You were there in that earthquake? I was, in fact, living about um, just a little more than a mile or so from the epicenter. Very, very close. Um, it changed my life. It rearranged my home, that's for sure. <laughs> Speaking loud and clear she was. <laughs> yes, very much so. At the time, I was already beginning to, to channel, beginning to... Um, do a few articles, do a little bit of work, but in that kind of doubting place, in that not certain who I am and what I'm doing place, and uh, it really did rock, rock my world. I used to have a license plate that said Gaia Rocks. Everybody knew. <laughs> <laughs> then I moved to Oregon, and there's not enough letters in the license plates now. <laughs> but it did really change. Um, it changed everything, and uh, it, d it destroyed a lot of the thoughts that I had, belief systems that I had. You know, there's nothing like having the earth beneath you be unstable. And it changes the stability of your whole life. The one thing that we count on is that we're going to wake up the next day and at least know that the ground that we're walking on is stable. And when that didn't happen, nothing else in my life was. And I really began to look at um, what's authentic, what's real. Does it have to be visible to be real? And as I started to explore all of those thoughts in, um, in really difficult ways, I have to say that I was upset, I was angry at the earth for doing that to me, to my family, to my home. You know, you, you go about life and you think you're a, you're a good person and you're doing good things. And there's a part of you that says, I don't deserve this. And, and then there's a part of you that says, well, I must deserve it because it happened. And in that, um, in that difficult moment, Gaia came forward and began to share with me a little bit more, a bigger view of what the earth is, what it means, what its purpose is, what it gives to us, the opportunities, and my life changed. Did this start as a kind of, you know, silent communication with you communing with the earth, or did it start as full-blown channeling? It began as, um, well, as physical, as kind of kinetic things were happening to me. Um, I fruit would fall off of trees, flowers would lose their petals, rocks would roll to me for a while. This, this lasted about mm, maybe about three months or so, so things were happening that I could see. And then there was flashing of pictures, a little bit like what you call, um, you know, stop-action photography, where things are happening faster than they would normally, a flower that's opening up too fast. And so a whole flash of pictures of what the earth looks like now, of what it's going to be looking like in the future, of what it looked like many years ago. People, evolution, changes, species that, that are not even on the earth yet that I know are coming. So past and present, and then after that came this big, uh, a few weeks later, this big kind of, wasn't exactly a booming voice, but it felt like it. And, uh, and it showed me after all these pictures and asked me, do you want to be a part of this? And, uh, and here's the big part where I get to say no. <laughs> I said no, I was an unequivocal no. I was upset and uh, concerned for myself and my family, and, and uh, no. So tell us, why you and why now? Say that again? Why you and yes. why now? Well, and here I would tell you that I was, um, Gaia tells me that I was not the first choice. <laughs> <laughs> so I was the second choice. And uh, so that's why me, because the first person said no. In fact, the first person I, I knew, found out later, is not in body anymore, and was a, a gentleman who, uh, at the time, was in a minor league baseball team, I found out. I don't know who it is or who it was. I know they're not in body anymore. And, uh, and he said no. 
<laughs> so, so why me is that I am uh, what I consider to be an ordinary woman. And at the time that Gaia came to me, the mother of two um, very young boys, and living in an ordinary suburb in Los Angeles as mostly a housewife, and it seemed to be that it needed to come from, from the very uh, essence that we are. And why now? And why now? Because at, at the time, and this was in 94 then, the first thing that Gaia had said to me was that our masters have spoken, our leaders have spoken, our angels have spoken, and now is time for the earth to speak. So what does the earth want to tell us? That we are doing and being exactly what we are supposed to be doing and being. That there is nothing wrong with us, that there's nothing wrong with the earth, that all is well, change is good, evolution is what happens all the time, every day, and we are a part of that in as big a way as we want to be, in as small a way as what we like, and that's just great with the earth. So all of the scaremongers who are saying, look what you're doing to the earth, mm -hmm. you're destroying it, mm -hmm. and the earth is angry, and the earthquakes yes. are occurring because of that, it's all bullshit. Well, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but it's important to, you know, someone needs to carry that message yeah. as well. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, it is. This is everything that's taking place on the earth right now. The earth changes, earthquakes, um, volcanoes, a lot of different things that are happening. It is the earth's time to do that. And Gaia tells us that if we could just look at things from a larger scheme, you know, from many, many more years and eons and of time, that it would all look very normal. This is what happens at this particular time, not because we've done something or we haven't done something. Do you have a sense when you are communicating with Gaia or Gaia's communicating through you, do you have a sense of what, is it a she? It is not. It is not she. But we tend. We need a pronoun. Yes. So we say. We say she. Okay. I tend to say she. It feels very much like a library to me. It ah. feels very much like a very vast essence. It feels not. Not like an empty chamber. Like something that is just full of compassionate love, and uh, it doesn't feel like he or she. And it includes everything, the animal kingdoms and the plant kingdom and the mineral kingdom and even what we think of as weather and even a relationship that we have with the other celestial bodies and with the sun, that is also Gaia or Gaian. It is all part of, it's part of the same family. We're part of the family, Gaia is our family, our neighbor and um, our mother as well. What's happening with all the earthquakes and the volcanic eruptions and things that are going on now? What's yeah. that all about? It is time for, for the earth to shift in that way. The earth has a very strong relationship as we know with the sun. So all of the solar energy, the, the relationship between the sun and all of the other planets every so often in the scheme of things begins to move in terms of its evolution in the same way that we move from adolescence to adulthood and through all of the different stages of life the earth also has its own stages and it's time for the earth to move and to shift dimensionally um, to include more to assist more and every time the earth changes we change too. It is part of our natural evolution. And there is, there's going to be more, uh, more earthquakes. There's a lot of sliding, there's a lot of things that we don't see as well, just underneath the earth, mm. just underneath the crust. There's movements of water, there's currents of energy that are shifting and moving. There's a lot that's happening on the ocean floor, smaller eruptions there. There's a lot happening that's not, that we don't see or have reported to us. Mostly what we see in our media is when it affects humanity in a very large way, when it affects us um, geologically, when it affects us economically, then we, we see that. But in those smaller changes, we don't see that as much. Are you given foreknowledge? You know, that's, um, I used to. In some, when I first started channeling Gaia, I had knowledge and vision to so many different things that it was astounding. And it was frightening to me. In fact, it was so, it was, some of it was so frightening that I didn't think that I could go on and do it if I had such, um, such access to so much. I didn't think I wanted the, the responsibility. I didn't know what to do with so much responsibility. So I actually created a small, almost like a ceremony for myself and went and took a small portion of this and gave it back and said, maybe I'll want this at another time, but I don't want that much. 
now because it, it, it did in, involve seeing future earthquakes and you know all those things like who made it and who didn't and that was a little bit much for yeah, me. I can imagine. So now I have as much vision as I want, as I'm open to and, and uh, I do want and have a lot. I do have access to quite a bit. So you've got a number of CDs and books and DVDs and they've all got very compelling names. <laughs> Tell us about the um, the mysteries of the crop circles, the things that we don't know. Yeah, you know that was um, that CD is from an interview that I did with a few um, pretty um, well-known crop researchers, and someone had actually set that up. They were at the time um, non-believers in some way. There was one that was a non-believer, and there was one that led people to crop circles, and then there was me. And as we put everything together, Gaia gave them information about where they were coming from, where the next ones were going to be, and even answered a lot of their questions about uh, man-made crop circles, which ones were man-made, and even how that uh, assisted us. Because if we, with that, you know, imitation being the best flattery or the best way to educate ourselves, even the people that were going about creating an imitation of the crop circle invited in that energy that was not as potent but still shared a certain amount of that knowledge with us. Well, it also creates a lot more awareness, doesn't yes, it? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, we understand a lot of the places where crop circles take place and in different wheat fields and places. They're actually going to be crop circles, what we call them, um, in places that are in the desert coming as well. If you want something, something new to look forward to, made out of sand and out, out of the sands, blending and moving. And, and of course, you know, you put one footprint in the sand and it definitely leaves a print. So they'll be a little bit more difficult to, to refute or say it's man-made when the sand begins to arrange itself that way. Why is so many happening in Wiltshire in England? You know, I don't know. I don't know that. That's a great question. I'd love to know that answer. Yes, I'm going to ask that for you. Thank you. <laughs> what about the, um, you know, the formations? I mean, they're getting more and more complex. Yes. And um, many people say that it's actually a code. Yes. That it's uh, doing something to, you know, visually through the eyes to our DNA and it's yeah. waking us up. Is that true? They're for the benefit of the earth, actually. They're, they're, they're less than for our benefit. They ah. are actually for the benefit of Gaia. And they have um, the vibration that they have. It's a vibration that just the, the geometry emits a vibration that is very beneficial to the earth. It's very healing to the earth. It's absorbed right away and then from absorb, absorbed and it's broadcast to all everything that is the earth, including humanity. But for the most part, we think they're there for us and it's actually a gift to Gaia. And is Gaia creating them or just... Inviting them. She's inviting them. Inviting so it's a bit like them. Gaia's getting tattoos. Well, in some <laughs> ways, yeah. You know, and we go and have our healing energies and different things. This is very healing to, to Gaia. Wow. Yeah. Tell us about the revolution at R evolutionary, and I can't say my R's very well, so yes. forgive me for that, but revolutionary human. Yes. Because Gaia's given you a lot of information about that. Yes, and, and in some ways it is. All the changes that are happening with us at this point, it is almost like a revolution is taking place within us that's rearranging uh, our DNA, it's, it's rearranging how we hold ourselves, it's rearranging um, an evolution of humanity. In essence, to, to, to put it very simply, as, as we move into this future time, we can either go up to here and hit a wall and not go forward as humanity, as a species, or as we approach this, some of us begin to move the wall aside, or some of us turn left and some of us turn right, and that is the revolution. And as I say that, Gaia tells us that there are a certain number of us that are really just going to go hit that wall. And those, you know, if we say we want to stay in the third dimension, that's essence what we're going to do. This is as far as we come as a species, as the human species, as we know ourselves now. So the revolutionary human being is the one that moves aside the wall, turns left, turns right, and continues to evolve. And that evolution is also going to be accelerating its pace. As we know, we've said earlier, that, um, that everything is accelerating quickly now, and it's going to continue to do that. How we are, our bodies, how we're arranged, our, our health is rearranging itself so that we hopefully won't continue to need the, well, the pharmaceutical industry and all those other things that we think that we need to keep us well. We don't. You've said that um, some of these physiological changes that are going to happen within us are mm -hmm. going to be very surprising and they're going to make 
technology is obsolete. Does this mean I can throw away my laptop and <laughs> stop doing what my laptop does? Well, I'm not ready to toss mine aside. <laughs> but, um, but yeah. What kind of technologies? Tell us more about the that. The technologies that are coming are, are more of the invisible coming into the visible. So a lot more of what we consider holographic at this point, where if we need a laptop, we holographically then manifest the laptop for us. We don't have to lug it around with us everywhere. So the energy that it is reconfigures itself for us so we don't have to lug around our electronics as much we've gotten as far as wireless technology and speeding things up but we haven't gotten to as yet we don't have to lug all of this density around so as we move into the fifth dimensional and other awarenesses a lot less stuff you know we have a lot of stuff in our lives and so there'll be a lot um Can a lot we less of that begin to materialize holographically so instead of having to talk to my grandchildren via skype i can have yes. them there in front of me as a hologram yes i think that's coming that i think uh, yes i don't think it's yeah. going to be very yeah. long for all all of that and it really is uh what we think of is not there you know we're moving there quickly if you see we have the 3d um televisions now yes. i heard in 3d movies well we're just that's next that's next. The holographic technology is just about there. Does Gaia play any part in changing our DNA in this whole evolution process or is Gaia just going through it alongside us? Yes, it's all happening at the same time. We are Gaia and Gaia is us. Okay. And so it's interconnected. All, yes. yes, so Gaia really doesn't do anything for us and uh, supports life on earth whatever that life is whatever we choose to do on this earth that's what we're going to get so Gaia helps us nurtures us supports us offers us nutrients and resources and then we do what we do with them and there is no correction there isn't any no no you don't get to do that or this is okay and that's not it really is up to us we cannot hurt Gaia we cannot hurt Gaia we cannot hurt the earth and we really can't hurt ourselves. Hurt ourselves, no. Yeah, we really can't. Absolutely. Yeah. You've said too that um, we, that Gaia has said that this particular lifetime is different than any other lifetime we've lived. Yes. What does that mean? It's different because in this lifetime, uh, our, our brains are coming very, very close to matching what we are consciously able to conceive. So, in essence, we have our brain and ordinary thoughts, human thoughts, and then there's what we think of as our consciousness, our awareness, or our spiritual awareness. And these two aspects are coming very, very close together because the brain that had a left brain and a right brain is merging into one. And the, the pathways are changing so that brain thoughts, human thoughts, and human consciousness, or what we think of as divine awareness, they're merging together. And that's how we're becoming the divine humans. It's already taking place. It's a physiological change, and it's happening while we're in the body. We don't have to leave the body, be asleep. We can be aware. In fact, the more aware we are of our life and our choices and the things that we're doing, the quicker that pace goes. And we're all, we're all part of that. You know, we don't have to wait for the fifth dimension to come. We are the fifth dimension and we're creating it as as we are we're making it just more and more available to us so that's all happening in this life it's one of the reasons why there's so many of us on the planet right now so much awakening taking place we've waited for this and we've earned it tell me about the fifth element the fifth <laughs> element is uh, akash it's ether it's uh, it's the, is this glue. the Akashic records. No, the Akashic records is more of, of truly that record keeping aspect. But it's called the Akashic records because it's made of the same material. It's that finest substance that there is in the universe that's still considered physical. It's something. And so the Akashic records hold all those truths. They hold the divine memories of all that we've squeezed the juice out of all those lifetimes that we've had. But Akash as the fifth element is the glue that holds together all the other elements or allows evolution to take place. It's what allows the law of awareness to work for us. It makes all things natural for us. It's the clay. It's, it's the invisible clay that we can use to do anything with in our life. Is this something that we're going to be aware of and utilizing more as we move forward? We can. It's always been there. It's not like there's been four elements before and then a fifth. But the more that we become aware of it, 
our ability to recognize it then allows us to use it more and understand it yeah I guess. you know yeah. if we want to build a house we know what materials we need to go get their physical materials well if we want to build a better home for our spirit we do that out of ether out of a kosh and then we choose at what point we want to physicalize that and the physicalness comes just from the density a dense thought becomes a physical thing what what else does Gaia want us to know because I know you've done something there's something like a list of ten things that Gaia has said we need to be doing or we should be thinking about there was a, a seminar that we did recently called the the ten most important things yes. to know <laughs> about um, about this this life and a lot of it has to do with how consciously we can create this life to become more aware of everything that we already have that we're already doing so the thing is just to be aware it is more than awareness to be consciously creating the life that we have based upon what we are already in other words we have everything that we need and for the most part we're not using it um, you know Gaia said um, before that it's almost like we have this banquet table laid out with every delicacy you could possibly imagine and she invites everyone to come and have everything they want and she says that on average we take about 15 percent of out of a hundred percent we take about 15 percent and say okay well that's enough you know that's enough I, I've had enough small. Yeah, we play small. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we forget who we really are and what yes. we're entitled to. Yes, yeah, and we look around us and we think, well, I've come this far and that's far enough, or I did a little better than I did last month or, or yeah. last year. And so the thing about this life is that we really don't have to do that anymore. Mm. How, could, how can we strengthen our own connection with Gaia and commune with Gaia ourselves? I think the very first thing to do is acknowledge that we are definitely living on the on the back on the body of a living being and you know it's not a rock and that living being as she said recently she said you're riding on the back of an elephant and if that elephant hiccups you're going to know about it <laughs> and uh, that's that's how it is right now and so the most thing we can do is just be aware that everything that we have is a living thing a living thought a living truth a living step that we're taking that every step that we take that's the next step furthers us furthers our truth for, for the benefit of the earth that we are a community of humanity a community of beings that we are at least brother and sister and cousin to every um, to every rock and plant and everything and to see everything as less dense as possible to see everything as light as possible I'm gonna be in trouble with my husband here because I see all these incredible rocks and to me they all look really light <laughs> mm -hmm. and so I say let's bring that home and he walks around like this <laughs> deep pockets <laughs> we were on our way back from from one trip and he was walking like this and I, and I didn't want them to, to stop him and say you have to check that so I'm like don't lean <laughs> walk straight <laughs> what are you what are you doing next Peppa you've got two books already in production I think you're planning some more aren't you yes there's a next book in the Gaia Speaks series coming out um, solutions for a small planet There's a lot of stuff in there so it's coming out as two volumes volume one and volume two that when should be out, out just in a couple months good it should be out hopefully just in by, time. Um, by May or June just in time just in time yeah and uh, it's being published in in uh, in English it's going to be out in German in Russian and even in Romanian it's just amazing just Gaia's Wonderful. words are just really traveling around the yeah. world it's very exciting very very exciting and where can people find out more about you and you your can work? find out as much as you want at pepperlewis.com and uh, there's there's audio programs you can find out about with Gaia sending out messages every two weeks now to continually update people a lot a lot more now you can subscribe to that and with so many earth changes that are going on now at all the seminars that I'm, I'm doing, I'm just adding a, a last segment now about earth, earth changes and as much as we can know. Um, I, I'm a little bit like Steve as well. I don't always bring out as much. I'm kind of arguing back there with spirit about what to, what what to do or what, what to, to say. And, and it's, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's time. It's time for, it really is time not to hold back anything, no matter what it looks like or sounds like, to just continually stimulate everything. Pepper, this is fascinating. Thank you. I'm going to talk to you some more about this Thank later. Thank you. I really enjoyed this, Thank too. you it's for joining great. us. Well, we'll be back in a few moments with Steve and Barbara. Stay tuned. <laughs>